The repeating vibration of the source is the origin of all waves, just like this kickboard. If I repeated the up and down motion of the kickboard, you see that a wave gets squirted out the front. It's this wave that we interact with. No matter what form the wave travels as, mechanical, sound, or light, all waves share similar behaviors. Waves can be bounced, or bent, or even interact with each other. In the case of light, waves can interact in such a way as to create images. Well, the cool part about speed is, speed is speed. It doesn't change. Well, that means all we have to do is recall how we define speed. Well, recall that speed is the rate of change of distance. Well, if we can convert that to wave terminology, then we're in business. And it really is as simple as that. Now, when we're measuring the speed of waves, we are usually measuring the time it takes for one wave to pass us and then for the next wave to pass us. That distance between those waves is the wavelength. So when we're measuring wave speed, we're looking at how quickly the waves are passing that one point. So we need to know, basically, the wavelength. Well, there's two types of waves, of course, transverse waves and longitudinal waves. Let's look first at a longitudinal wave. Now, a good analogy to demonstrate a longitudinal wave is a convoy of Hot Wheels. Well, I have one convoy here, or one set of three here, and another set of three Hot Wheels here. Now, what I've done is these, each one of these bundles are the same length long, and that distance is the same here. So we have three, an empty space of three Hot Wheels, and then three more cars. Well, if I want to know the wavelength of a longitudinal wave, a convoy demonstrates that beautifully. As we look at the wavelength, it would be the distance between this front bundle and this front bundle. Bundle referring also to the slinky spring. If you remember, there was a bundle of coils that were compressed, and the wavelength would be the distance between any two corresponding points on those bundles. So the wavelength here would be between the front of this car or the front of it and the front of this car. Could also be the distance between the middle and the middle or the tail and the tail. Either way, two corresponding points. So from a distance point of view, if we're going to have this convoy pass army guy and determine the velocity of our convoy past army guy, then what we need is to measure the time it takes for one wavelength to pass. Now, the time for one wavelength is called the period. Remember that the waves are created by a disturbance, a back and forth motion, and the time it takes for between each disturbance is the period. And so we can convert all our terminology of distance and time, where the distance would effectively be communicated by the wavelength, and the time it takes for one of those wavelengths to pass is defined as the period. And so we've defined wave speed as the wavelength divided by the period. Now also recall that period is inversely related to the frequency, which gives us an alternative expression for this as lambda f. And so we end up with our definition of wave speed. So there we go. Well, why don't we apply this to both the longitudinal wave and a transverse wave? So back to our Hot Wheels. If we're looking and want to do an example of this, we have to look at and get some off-the-cuff measurements. Well, that's okay. It's not a problem. So we need to find the wavelength or estimate the wavelength between the fronts of the two cars. Now, I'm using this as an example of a longitudinal wave. Another good analogy for a longitudinal wave might be a parade. You've got groups of bands traveling and floats, and generally they're of the same length, and they're separated the same distance. So you could get an idea about the wave speed of events passing in front of you. So we begin by knowing what our wavelength is. Well, let's, let's look at this. If each car, uh, let's estimate it, look, uh, two inches. We'll say it's two inches. And if there's about two and a half centimeters for every inch, then that makes every car about five centimeters long. 
So five, five, and five makes this bundle of cars about 15 centimeters. Well, if the gap is also 15 centimeters, that would make this 15 centimeters as well. So the wavelength would be the distance between the front of this car and the front of this car. So at 15 and 15, our wavelength would be 0.3 meters or 30 centimeters. So for our longitudinal example, for our longitudinal example, we'll estimate our wavelength to be, oh, something like 0.3 meters. Now in order to determine the wave speed or the speed at which the convoy passes Army Guy, all we need to determine then is the period at which it takes the front of the car and the front of the car to pass. All right, so I'm going to pull at a constant velocity and time as we go. All right, roughly 2.63 seconds. So we end up with a period of 2.63 seconds. Well, if wave speed is the question, and we understand the, the wavelength and the period of time, then it becomes 0.3 meters divided by 2.63 seconds. And if we divide those two values out, we end up with a wave speed of 0.11 meters per second. All right, not bad for a Hot Wheels convoy. All right, well, let's try to apply the concept of wave speed to a transverse wave. 